Today we'll be discussing iron condors and how to trade them within the Thinkorswim web app. We're going to start by learning what they are, how they work, but also how to manage them throughout the life of the trade. And just as a quick reminder, I will be using the web-based version of Thinkorswim, so if your platform looks a little bit different than this one, you're probably on the desktop site. In order to access this one, you'll simply need to head to the website trade.thinkorswim.com and then go ahead and log in with the exact same user ID and password that you normally use. But like I mentioned at the beginning, we're going to be learning about iron condors, which are composed of both a short vertical put spread and a short vertical call spread. This is going to be a directionally neutral trade, mainly benefiting from things like time decay and from volatility decreasing. Now that'll all make a lot more sense after we go through a few examples, so for now, let's go ahead and pull up an option chain. To do that, we're going to begin by coming up here to the search box at the very top and then throwing in the symbol of the stock that we want to trade, in this case Amazon or AMZN. From there, we can then come down below and find the option chain, and by clicking on the little arrow on the left-hand side, we can then see a list of all of the available options expirations right down here below. Beginning first on the left-hand side, you'll first notice a list of all of the expiration dates themselves, starting here at January 27th of 2023, but going all the way out to it looks like June 20th of 2025. To the right of each of those dates of expiration is the actual number of days until expiration. Then over here on the far right-hand side, we can also see the implied volatility as well. If we were to come above and actually click on one of those expiration dates, like in this case, February 17th, we can then see a list of a few of the available strikes right down the center of our screen, beginning here at the $95 strike, but going all the way out to the $100 strike. If you ever wanted to expand that list out even further and see further out of the money options, we could either hit the more button on either side or come up here to the strikes menu in the upper right hand corner where it currently says strike six, and then within that menu, we could then expand to the number of strikes that we wanted to see. And in my case, I'm going to flip this over to 12. Once that's done, if I then come back to the center and scroll down just a little bit, we can now see a few more strikes have now been added, beginning here at the $92 strike and going all the way out to the 103. If you were to look to the left of those strike prices, you will find all the call options, whereas to the right of those strikes are going to be all of the available put options. Coming to the very top of the option chain, we can also see what information is being displayed down here below. Currently, I'm seeing the current delta, the probability in the money, and the current bid and asking price of those options, essentially what they're trading for right now. When the time comes to actually place the trades themselves, you will be clicking on the asking price when you want to buy and the bid price when you want to sell. Since we're going to be creating an iron condor, we'll need to begin by selling an out-of-the-money call and an out-of-the-money put. Some traders like to pick these strike prices based off the technicals, but others like to do it on probabilities, or some combination between the two. For right now, I'm going to be picking my strikes based on delta. I'm going to be choosing to sell those options with a delta around 30 or so. Beginning first with the put options, it looks like that would be roughly the 92 strike put. So I can see it's got a delta currently of 31. And to the right of that strike price, the right of 92, I can see that put option is currently trading for 283 by 285. In order to sell it, I'll begin by clicking on the bid price of $2.83. Once that's done, it will build out an order ticket down here below to just outright sell that put, but I still got a lot of work to do. And I need to move on to selling the call option next, the 30 delta call. And at the moment, it looks like I'm not seeing far enough out of the money in order to sell the 30 delta call. So I'm going to hit the more button down here, expand it a little bit further. And it looks like the closest would either be the 105 strike or the 106. So for now, I'm going to stick with the 105. And it looks like the 105 is currently trading for 239 by 240. Just like before, in order to sell it, we're going to click on the current bid price, $2.39. And now that that's done, if we were to look down here below, my order ticket actually says I'm about to sell a strangle. And that's exactly what we've done so far. We've said that we think the stock is going to stay somewhere between our two short strikes. We think it's going to stay somewhere between $92 a share and $105 a share. As long as it does that, as long as it stays between those two short strikes, we could actually make $5.24 or $524 per strangle. 
The problem with this trade as it sits currently is that if we're wrong, we could theoretically lose an infinite amount of money. There's no limit to how much money I could lose on this trade right now. So in order to protect ourselves, we're going to be buying wings to either side to hedge in the event that we're wrong. And the stock actually does have a big move up in one direction or the other. Now, for me personally, I like to buy my wings about five points even further out of the money to turn this into a five point wide iron condor. And in this case, that would be buying the $87 puts and the 110 calls. To do that, let's go ahead and come back up here to the option chain. And I'm going to first begin by finding that 87 strike put. So right here, the $87 put is trading for $1.53 by $1.55. And since I want to buy it, I'm going to be clicking on the asking price. Remember, that's our protective wing to protect us to the downside. To do the exact same thing on the call side, I need to scroll down just a little bit. And I'm going to be finding the 110 strike calls. And right here, I can see the 110 calls are currently trading for $1.28 by $1.30. And to buy that wing, we'll click on the asking price. By buying those wings, we have now created an iron condor down here below. It even identifies it as an iron condor. And looking at the credit down here below, we can see we're giving up a little bit of our potential profit by doing the strangle because now we can only make $2.41. We've essentially given up about half of our potential profit to protect us in the event that we're wrong, to reduce the risk on this trade and reduce how much we could lose if the stock does have a big move up or down. So now the absolute most we could ever make on this trade is going to be that credit of $2.42 or $242. And the only way we're ever going to make that full max profit is by holding the iron condor through expiration, which I generally never do. The max loss, on the other hand, is going to be defined by the width of the iron condor minus that credit. So since we sold a five point wide iron condor, the most we could ever lose is gonna be the width of the spread, $5, minus the credit. And in this case, we said we're gonna be collecting a credit of $2.42. So the most I could ever lose on this iron condor is gonna be $2.58 or $258 per iron condor. Now, the reason we calculated that max loss off of only one side of the spread, I only use $5 instead of $10, is because it's only possible for us to be wrong on one side. The stock can't simultaneously be above 110 while also being below 87, so I can only lose on one side, not both. But now that we've got everything set in order to place this, we'll just come down here below to the lower right hand corner and hit review, then go ahead and hit send to actually place it. Once the order's been placed, we could go ahead and check on it either by scrolling down to the trade section where right here I can actually see that order ticket right here, or by coming back up here to the positions page right up here at the top. Then by coming over here to the right, we can actually see it just filled. So I should have just filled on that Amazon iron condor. And if I click on the little arrow to the left of it, right down here below in the position section, we can see that iron condor that I just sold. When it comes time to close or to buy back this iron condor, we will do so by simply clicking on the spread itself. So clicking on iron condor here. You can then see it takes me back to the Amazon trades page where we can see our positions down here below as well as our working orders. And since I want to close out of this iron condor, the first thing I need to do is uncheck this working order right here to buy five shares of Amazon. And now that that's done, my positions all have little check marks next to them. So each leg of that iron condor has a little check right next to it. And now in order to close it, we can come down here to the lower right hand corner and hit close select it. That will then build out an order ticket to close out of the entire iron condor, each one of those legs by simultaneously buying back the shorts and selling the longs all at the exact same time. I could then come down here to the lower right hand corner and adjust the price, which right now it's at the exact same price I sold it for because not much time has passed. But I could also just set a profit target amount as well, saying if it ever goes down to this price, buy it back. And for right now, I'll set it to about 50% of the profit target. So in this case, I want to buy it back if it ever goes down to about $1.20. And since that is very unlikely to happen today, I'm going to come over here to the right where it currently says day and flip that over to GTC, making this order work good until canceled. So this is going to go out every single day. And if I can ever buy back this iron condor for $1.20, it's going to buy it back. Now that I'm happy to place it, we'll just come down here below and hit review and then send. 
If I now wanted to monitor that trade, I could come back here to the positions page. Then coming over here to the right to the activity section, we can see all of my working orders. I still have that open order to buy five shares of Amazon right here. But then more importantly, I've got that order to buy back that iron condor if I can ever buy it back for $1.20. If at some point I ever needed to cancel or edit this order in some way, I could come to the far left hand side and hit the little check mark box here. Then down below at the very bottom of the screen, I could either hit cancel to outright cancel the order or hit edit selected to adjust it in some way. But now that you know how to create an iron condor, let's cover some of the best practices. How to pick the expiration, the strikes, and when to close out of the trade. Beginning first with the expiration, I typically like to stick to an expiration somewhere between 30 to 60 days out. That's mainly because time decay starts to ramp up around that time, so going out any further than that doesn't really do me much good. As I hold the trade, theta is going to continue to grow as we near expiration, but if we get too close to expiration, we'll also start to see a lot more volatility in our contracts. So again, that's why I like to stick to that 30 to 60 day range, to sell close to expiration, but not too close. It's also another reason why a lot of option sellers choose to close out of their iron condors about 21 days out from expiration, no matter how the trade is going. But really, this is not an exact science, and eventually you will figure out what you like to do. For me personally, I choose to sell the majority in that 30 to 60 day range, but also I like to do a few weeklies as well to try and increase my return just a little bit. Now after picking the expiration, you'll next need to find the right strikes to sell. Most of us are going to use probabilities to determine the strike, and for me it's usually going to pick those options around the 30 delta or the 70% probability out of the money. I also tend to purchase my wings or my hedges about 5 points even further out of the money, so that's where I like to buy my wings. If you choose to sell closer to the current price, you will collect more premium, you will get paid more, but you're also going to be far more likely to be assigned. The further out of the money you sell, the less you're going to get paid, but also the less likely you are to be assigned. So it's going to be a fine balance, selling out as far as you possibly can, but also ensuring you get paid enough money to make the trade worth it. So that's why we like to stick to that 30 delta range as much as possible. Now finally, when it comes time to close the vertical, it'll generally be a good idea to have a predefined profit target in your head when you're going into the trade. Whether that be 50% or 75%, just have a plan from the get-go. Like I said at the beginning, I personally like to aim for that 50% profit target, but you do what fits best. And on the flip side of that, you'll also want to have a plan to get out when things go wrong. Since it is a spread, we've got that risk to find at the very beginning. We do know exactly how much we can lose, but most are going to exit prior to taking on that max loss. One of the popular strategies is to buy back the spread when it trades for two times the credit received. So for example, if I sold an iron condor for a dollar, if it were to ever go to two dollars, I would probably think it's time to get myself out of this thing, to cut my losses and move on. Now, besides just closing it out if it goes against you, besides just closing out of the entire iron condor, you could just decide to roll one side of the spread. So because this is composed of both a short vertical put spread and a short vertical call spread, you could just choose to roll out one side of the spread. And a lot of times, a lot of people like to roll the untested side closer to the money to collect more money and offset the risk. But I'm not going to touch on that too much in today's video. I don't want to talk about rolling too much since it's not something you'll do often on an iron condor. But check out this video if you did want to learn more. But now taking into account those best practices, if I were to pull up Google as a new example. So let's come up here and type in G-O-O-G. Coming down below and opening up the option chain, looking at the options down here below at the expiration dates, if I wanted to stick to that 30 to 60 day time frame window, I'm going to come down here below and we'll pick the March 17th expiration, 53 days out from now. Once we've got the expiration opened up, we can now find the strikes down here below. And like I said before, we're going to begin by selling the 30 delta options. So in this case, if I were to expand the put side, it looks like that would be the 95 strike puts. So I'm going to go ahead and sell the 95s by clicking on the bid price. I'm then going to buy my protective wing five points even further out of the money. So that's going to be the 90 strike puts. And to buy it, I'm going to click on the asking price. Once the put spread is built out, I can then scroll down here below and do the exact same thing on the call side. Beginning first by selling the 30 delta calls. 
And in this case, it looks like the closest to that would be the 110 strike calls. So click on the bid price to sell it and then come down here and buy five points even further out of the money, which would be the 115 calls. Now that that's found, I can come over here and click on the asking price to buy at 89 cents. And now down here below, I have now built out an iron condor. And again, I am selling the 95 by 110 iron condor. So ideally I want Google to stay between 95 and $110 a share for this trade to profit the absolute most. We can also see down here below that I'll be collecting a premium of $2.03. So the absolute most amount of money I could make on this trade now is going to be $204. And besides just putting out the order to sell this iron condor, I want to set a condition stating if I sell this thing, I want to automatically put out my order to buy back the iron condor. This is going to be an example of an advanced order, and I'm going to go through this quickly. So if you want to learn more about these, you can watch this video. But for now, I'm going to come down here below and I'm going to set a contingent order. This is now going to build out an order just below the first one. And it's saying when this order fills, then I want this order to be submitted to buy it back. Using my best practices as before, I'm going to set it as a 50% profit target. So if I'm going to be selling this iron condor for $2.04, I want to buy it back for $1.02. So coming down here, I'm going to adjust the price to $1.02 pennies. Since that is very unlikely to happen today or anytime soon, I'm going to come over here to the day box and flip that over to GTC. Now that everything is set and I'm happy with it, I can come down here below and hit review and then send to actually submit it. In order to check on it, we could just come back up here to the positions page. And if I look over here on the right hand side, it looks like my iron condor is right here. At the moment, it looks like I haven't actually sold it yet. So right here, I still have that open order to sell the iron condor for $2.04. And then if that ever fills this order, is going to trigger this next order to go out there to buy it back for a dollar and two cents. But I know that's a lot, but it really does cover just about everything you'll need to know to get started in Thinkorsim Web and how to trade iron condors within here. Hopefully after all that, you now feel at least a little bit more comfortable with this and with iron condors. I know it's a lot to learn and I covered a lot of stuff only briefly. So if you are looking to learn more, consider checking out this video next. But otherwise, I hope you have a great rest of your week and I'll see you on the next one.